Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine on February 24th, the international community has been denouncing Russia, but Beijing has been assuming an ambiguous attitude. On the one hand, it claims that China has always respected the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries, while on the other hand, it says that China understands the legitimate concerns of the Russian side on security issues. In other words, it does not acknowledge Russia's aggressive behavior. This contradictory and torn mentality of the Beijing authorities is also reflected in the direction of public opinion in China. As we all know, China's social media platforms are strictly controlled by the authorities, and voices that do not conform to the authorities' position will definitely be suppressed or deleted. It is obvious that the voices that remain on China's internet represents the official position of China's authorities. In the first few days, there was a one-sided phenomenon of supporting Russia and disparaging Ukraine on China's internet. There were even the little pinks who ridiculed that Ukrainian beauties should take the opportunity to find a Chinese man to marry, and so on. There are also a lot of Putin's admirers who sent videos to praise Putin. Here is the logic and thought process behind the little pinks. Russia is bad, and now the Western countries are united against Russia. However, China will be exposed to the world, and the Western countries will be against China if Russia is defeated, so they must support Russia. One Chinese microblogger said, I have recently blocked all swift transactions of donations from Shanghai to Ukraine. What are they thinking? Donating money to those American dogs? No way. The lady in the video even threatened the Taiwanese with the situation of Ukraine saying that the Chinese Communist Party will take Taiwan one day. Of course, there are also those who have expressed their opposition to the war and called for peace in various ways, but their voices were suppressed by the CCP. This brave young man shown in the video put up a banner in the streets of Hangzhou calling for the stop to the war, but was quickly taken away by security guards. This is Yuan Li, a famous Chinese actress whose Weibo account has been permanently banned for frequently posting comments that do not meet the opinion of the authorities. Recently, she tweeted a video of herself opposing the war and calling for peace. Jin Xing, a famous Chinese host, also commented on Weibo on March 1st, saying, The most frightening thing in 2022 is that a Chinese woman with an iron chain around her neck said, the world doesn't care about me anymore. And that a crazy Russian man said, I will destroy the world if I'm not allowed to continue to be president. Stop the war and pray for peace. However, Jin Xing's comments were censored and her blog post was deleted. Jin Xing later issued a statement that her Weibo post was not deleted by herself. As a consequence, she was completely banned from Weibo. The Chinese woman with a chain around her neck mentioned in Jin Xing's blog post refers to the recent Xuzhou iron-chained woman incident that continues to fester in China. A trafficked woman was chained by her husband to a dilapidated house for more than 20 years and forced to give birth to eight children. After the incident came to light, the authorities issued five contradictory investigation reports but still failed to reveal the truth. For those who are interested, the YouTube channel Inconvenient Truths by Jennifer Zeng has more details and follow-up reports. In fact, when Russia and Ukraine were first at war, five prominent Chinese historians Sun Jiang, Wang Lixin, Xu Guoqi, Zhong Weimin, and Chen Yan jointly issued an open letter condemning Russia. They firmly support the Ukrainian people's act of defending their country, and at the same time expressed their worries about Russia's actions of trampling on the principles of international justice. The open letter was blocked only a few hours after being published on WeChat, and is now only visible on Twitter and other websites. The Chinese Communist Party is not only controlling the speech of its own people, but also the Ukrainians living in China, some of whom expressed their support for their country and condemned the Russian aggression online. However, they were warned by the Chinese police to shut their mouth about the war. These Ukrainians then reported to the Ukrainian embassy and consulate in China for help. An official letter was issued 
from the Consulate General of Ukraine in Shanghai to the Foreign Affairs Office of five provinces in one city. The Ukrainian embassy expressed their deep concern and requested China to stop such acts. The official position of the CCP is not immutable. In fact, as early as February 26, after the Russian military failed to make progress on the battlefield, the CCP began to secretly change its direction of public opinion. On February 27th, the official microblogging site CCP at CCTV also released news that Ukraine opened a foreign currency donation to help the Ukrainian army, asking donations to support the Ukrainian armed forces. However, ironically, the Little Pinks have not yet realized that the Communist Party has started placing bets on both sides and reported CCTV's actions as a violation to the authorities. A netizen ridiculed that every time the party media changes their stance, they leave behind a bunch of confused idiots. Unlike other countries, Chinese officials did not evacuate the Chinese people before the war started, leaving many Chinese and foreign students in Ukraine. After the war broke out, on February 24th, the Chinese embassy in Ukraine told Chinese citizens to stay at home or at school, and if they needed to go out, they should hang Chinese flags on their cars to protect themselves. However, the anti-Ukrainian comments of Chinese netizens, especially the joke going around about taking in Ukrainian beauties, which was translated and sent to Ukraine, seems to have triggered anti-Chinese sentiment there. According to the video posted by people in Ukraine, some Chinese people were shot in Kiev, and others were splashed with buckets of cold water. Some international students posted that they were attacked while shopping. Chinese people in Ukraine were questioned by locals in subways and bomb shelters about their nationality, but they did not dare to call themselves Chinese and lied about being Japanese. On February 26, the Chinese embassy in Ukraine changed its mind and advised Chinese people not to identify their true nationality. Many students who were stranded in Ukraine were anxious and helpless and asked for help on WeChat and Weibo. Screenshots of the Chinese students there said, Save us, I repeat, the embassy didn't come to save us. Rather than sending over a plane, they asked us to help ourselves and left us alone. What should the countless Chinese students in Kharkiv do? The student also accused domestic journalists and the internet of blocking them from asking for help. Really, really, no one came to save us. After some Chinese netizens sparked outrage in Ukraine by making fun of the war, Chinese mainstream media began to call on the public not to do so, and internet censorship adjusted to the situation by officially shutting down accounts with vulgar content, such as taking in Ukrainian beauties. But pro-war videos and articles continue to circulate on the internet. In particular, after the US and its allies announced that some Russian banks will be kicked out of SWIFT, on February 28th, Beijing suddenly changed its direction and used the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Shanghai Communique to hold a large commemorative concert in Shanghai, talking about how friendly China and the U.S. are. However, the U.S. seemed indifferent. They sent out a five-member high-level delegation, led by Mullen, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to visit Taiwan on March 1st. On March 2nd, former U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo arrived in Taiwan for a visit and met with senior government officials and business representatives, including ROC President Tsai Ing-wen and Premier Su Tseng Cheng. The U.S. has shown its support for Taiwan as a way to deter the Chinese Communist Party. On February 4th, Russian President Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping held a summit meeting just hours before the opening of the Winter Olympics in Beijing. In a joint statement issued after the meeting, they said friendship between the two countries knows no bounds, and cooperation has no limits. 
This was followed by the signing of a major energy trade deal of over 150 billion US dollars. Xi Jinping's move was widely seen by Western countries as China's willingness to join the autocratic axis. On the surface, the CCP has been evasive, neither expressing its support for Russia nor acknowledging Russia's aggression. However, it seems to be driving the entire population to secretly support Russia economically. It has been rumored that a large number of Chinese netizens has recently flocked to the Russian State Pavilion, the only official e-commerce platform authorized by the Russian embassy in China, and snatched up all the goods in the store, many of which are now out of stock and can only be pre-ordered. The store's homepage issued a special thank you video on March 2nd, in which Sergei Batsev, the Russian Federation's commercial ambassador to China, expressed his gratitude to their old friend, China, for their support of Russia and the Russia Pavilion in these difficult times. In addition to Sergei's video thanking Chinese consumers, another Russian representative on a Chinese e-commerce platform also recorded a video, thanks to our Chinese friends for their support at a special time. From the control of public opinion, we can see the contradictory and awkward position of the Chinese Communist Party towards the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Some scholars analyze that China supports Russia's opposition to NATO's eastward expansion, and in return, Russia supports China's claim on Taiwan and the South China Sea. The CCP's alliance with Russia against the West is a long-established policy. On December 30th last year, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi said in an interview, as long as the two great powers, China and Russia, stand shoulder to shoulder and deepen collaboration back to back, the international order will not be disrupted, world justice will not fall, and hegemony will not win. According to the news from all sides, Putin has long been prepared that he would be sanctioned by the West after invading Ukraine. That is why he used the occasion of the Beijing Winter Olympics to sign a big trade deal with China before the invasion. In return, Putin promised to support Xi Jinping's claims on Taiwan and the South China Sea, and also set the invasion of a Ukraine in the early morning of February 24th, three days after the end of the Beijing Winter Olympics, fulfilling Xi Jinping's wish for the world's attention to be focused on the Beijing Olympics, which is also considered to have given Xi Jinping face. In addition, from the speech and action of Russia and China, as well as coverage from the United States, we can be sure that the CCP is fully aware of Putin's plans to invade Ukraine. The reason why the Chinese embassy in Ukraine did not withdraw the overseas Chinese and let the Chinese expatriates play the red flag to protect themselves is twofold. Firstly, they wanted to cover for the Russian invasion. Secondly, the CCP held Putin and Russia's military power in high esteem and thought that the Russian army would take over Ukraine in a flash. What they did not expect is that the Russian army would falter in Kiev. Now that the Russian blitzkrieg has failed and the US-led democracies went all out to sanction Russia, it's made clear to the CCP that it would also be sanctioned by the West if it sided with Russia against the world. The CCP's top officials, thinking that their kids and their assets are in the West, suddenly panicked, and were able to see various manifestations of their weakness. In addition to buttering up the United States with friendly words, the propaganda machine of the CCP is in full swing, saying that Xi Jinping has also been tricked by Putin. According to The Voice of America, the article quoted several China experts analyzing that Putin played Xi Jinping in this Russia-Ukraine war and that he put Xi in a very awkward situation. Many core members of the CCP leadership are clearly upset that Xi made Beijing look like it was really supporting Russia, and it made Beijing look bad. Some experts believe that Putin is deliberately trying to distance the relationship between the Chinese Communist Party under Xi Jinping and the West. Now that the entire West is united and the CCP is marked as an important ally of Russia, Putin's actions have presented the CCP very poorly.